From KGW News, this is Straight Talk with Laurel Porter. Hello and welcome to Straight Talk. I'm Laurel Porter. Ballots are going out soon for the November 8th election, and Oregon has a brand new congressional district that will be on the ballot. Following the results of the 2020 census, the state is adding a sixth member to Congress. In this episode of Straight Talk, we meet the two candidates vying for your vote. Democrat Andrea Salinas is a three-term state lawmaker from Lake Oswego and a former congressional staffer. If elected, she could become, along with Republican Lori Chavez Dreamer in the 5th District, the first Latina member of Congress from Oregon. The Republican nominee is Mike Erickson, a Lake Oswego businessman who started the AFMS supply chain logistics company and is running as a political outsider. He's run for Congress twice before in 2006 and 2008. Here's a look at the areas included in the new 6th District. It ranges from the suburbs of southwest Portland to Salem, Woodburn and Yamhill County and Lake Oswego in Clackamas County. In all, the 6th District encompasses five counties. This race is being watched not just locally but nationally and has been called possibly the closest race of its kind in Oregon in a generation. Republicans say polls show Erickson has a substantial lead, but other neutral polls show a race too close to call, with Democrats having a slight voter registration edge. And this race has gotten pretty ugly, with Erickson suing the Salinas campaign and Salinas personally over a negative political ad he says isn't true. Tonight, we're pleased to have both candidates joining us. They've chosen to appear in separate segments and both by Zoom because of scheduling conflicts. And we begin with Republican Mike Erickson. Mike, welcome to Straight Talk. We appreciate, appreciate your being here. Yeah, thanks, Laurel, for having me. Well, we'll get to that controversial ad I mentioned a few minutes. But first, let's start with why you think you are the best choice to represent this vast new district. Well, I think the difference between uh, Andrew Salinas and myself is pretty dramatic. Um, I've been a businessman, job creator. I've either lived or worked in the district consecutively for almost 40 years. Uh, I started my company here in Tiger, Oregon 30 years ago. Uh, I used to work at Tiger Fred Meyer back when I was in college. Um, I lived in Tiger and Tualatin. So for me, I've been around in this area here for almost 40 years, either working or living. Or my opponent doesn't even live in the district. She just moved here from California a few years back. And, um, so I think I'd be a better representative from that perspective, being from this community for a long time and going to Portland State and being here. But also, uh, you know, the, the other issues, like I support backing our police and law enforcement officers. And I, I see my opponent has voted against many different legislations. Uh, a lot of them, it's six that I know of recently here, that really make it harder for police officers to do their job. I mean, interfering with an officer doing their job. If someone's uh, like my dad, who's a policeman for 30 years, is being in the process of arresting somebody, uh, Salinas passed a bill here recently that says those officers can't arrest somebody who's trying to interfere with my dad doing his job and arresting him. And also, like another bill that she passed was um, uh, that she passed for was um, that was House Bill uh, 3164. But also, she voted for forbidding police officers from making traffic stops and vehicle for vehicle infractions like your headlights are out or all your taillights are out and driving at night. And that could be a serious accident waiting to happen. You come up on a light and you don't see the person with their headlights out. But she voted for to make it so you can't pull someone over. I mean, there's so many bills that have been passed, five or six that Salinas voted against that make it really hard for police officers to do their job. And, and Mike, I'm going to jump in here so we can keep moving along. But I will ask Salinas about the about her position on crime. And she also says that her father was a police <clears throat> officer. We'll talk more about that. But I want to talk about something that's top of mind for a lot of voters, and that's inflation. And I want to let our viewers know we're taping this on Thursday. But President Biden is expected to be here Friday and Saturday on Saturday talking about inflation and how to bring down costs for Americans. And I'm sure out on the campaign trail. You've heard a lot about inflation from voters and the soaring cost of gasoline and groceries. What can you tell them you're going to do about it if you're elected to Congress? And why is your plan better than your opponents? Well, as a businessman here in the district, I understand what, what small businesses and people are going through. It's tough right now. I mean, inflation's killing not only the, the restaurants and small businesses and the farmers. Our diesel prices, our gas prices are extremely high. It's one of the labor costs have gone up dramatically. As a businessman, I'm dealing with all those issues as well, higher labor costs. Uh, those are important to everybody in this district here. So we need to do everything we can back in Congress to get inflation under control. We have runaway national, or uh, out of control national debt. Uh, our government feels like they can just keep adding more to that. And just, we really need to manage our money in Congress and our federal dollars better than we are today. And I'll be a big part of that. We've yep. got inflationary problems, not just there, but supply chain. 
Uh, and then you've got our housing. And then you've got food prices. So all these things are a big impact on inflation. We need to do everything in Congress we can to get those under control. What would you do, do Mike, what would you do specifically, though? What program, what votes would you take to try to bring down inflation and those costs? Well, two of them, I would be voting for all these um, indiscretionary spending bills that are just compiling onto our national debt. That's, that's just wrong. And we've added like, what, $6 trillion in the last two years since Biden's taken over. Uh, the higher the national debt, we got to pay interest to a lot of countries that own our debt. That's wrong. We really need to balance our budget and stay within our means. Uh, we don't have a taxation problem. Uh, we have a spending problem in Washington, D.C. The other thing is supply chain. I've been doing this for 30 years. Um, supply chain costs are passed on to consumers every day. Or if you order something from uh, a FedEx or UPS shipping to your house, you're paying almost 20, 30 percent more to have that product delivered to you, whether it be a food item or whether it be a, an item you need for your house or your business. In the last two years since COVID, all the transportation costs have gone up dramatically, some of them tenfold. For instance, any container ship coming from the West Coast or from the Pacific Rim to the West Coast, any port, Oakland, Seattle, LA, Long Beach, it used to be two, three thousand dollars. Now it's like fifteen to sixteen thousand dollars. Uh, it's unbelievable. And those costs are being passed on to consumers. I think there's a lot of price gouging going on at the on, the on the supply chain global level. I'd really like to go back and dig deeper. I do this every day. I help companies reduce their supply chain costs, shipping costs. That's a big part of inflation. And so I like to be a, a, a hawk in that area, go back and do my best to get and curb the, those kind of inflationary measures that are, I think are controllable by us keeping a watch on them. And, and you mentioned this earlier about crime. You've positioned yourself as the law and order candidate who's tough on crime, yet you're having to discuss the DUI you got in 2016 for drunk driving in Hood River. How do you reconcile your tough talk on crime and your choice to drink and drive then and your plea deal in that case? Well, first let me say crime is out of control in the state. Uh, it's rampant everywhere. I'm just sick and tired of the politicians and the the DAs and the people out here just going through and letting a slap on a hand for someone to go through and robs a store, breaks into a car, whatever it is. So we need to do everything we can to uphold the laws and enforce the laws in the state. I don't think we're doing a good enough job here. I think we need to send a stronger message. But Mike, how do you reconcile that, that position with your own choice to drink and drive? I made one mistake in my life. If you look at my record, in my entire life, I made one mistake. And I, 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 I thought it was fine. I was leaving a wedding and I, I had a, a couple of drinks too many. I thought it was fine. So I made a mistake in my life. I did the classes, did the diversion, and I, I regret doing that. So that's the one thing I've done wrong in my life that I wish I wouldn't have, and I'm sorry about that. And now uh, you're, you're suing again. You're, you're suing the Salinas campaign and Salinas herself for $800,000 <laughs> over a negative ad about that drunk driving incident. You know, there are a lot of negative ads running um, in all the campaigns, it seems. Why file a lawsuit over this one? Well, it's not about the, the, the DUI. It's about what she's saying. As many viewers have seen on your TV show and other channels here, Andrew Salinas has made false accusation after false accusation in the personal false untrue statements. The Oregonian did a review of this. They called the district attorney's office. They checked the facts. The Oregonian put in their paper here just last week that what Andrew Salinas is saying is 100% not true. She's in fact, not factual at all, not factual. The district attorney's office actually called her office and said, Salinas, and talk to her. What you're saying is not true. You should pull down those ads. The district attorney's office and the Oregonian both validated that what she's saying on TV is not true. What she's doing is she's putting out negative, false lies on TV to get elected. And if that's the kind of congresswoman you want, someone who'll lie to get elected, what would she do back in DC? She'll probably lie about other things. You know, she's from a, being a DC lobbyist and back in DC for many years. I'm just not gonna put up with it. She, I've got a business here in town. I've got a good reputation. I've had one mistake in my life. That, that, that issue there. The Salinas, campaign, the Salinas campaign says that police did cite you and accuse you of drug possession of that hydrocodone pill you said was your wife's, even though prosecutors didn't end up filing charges. So the Salinas campaign is saying a charge is a charge. Uh, what do you want the Salinas campaign to do? Well, what, what you just said is not true. They didn't charge you with anything. In fact, it's not true. The district attorney called him and said, hey, in fact, what well, you just said, Laurel, is not true. The district attorney's office called him and said, there's never been a charge. We never even thought about charging Mike with anything. So that's completely not true. That's another thing. You just, you're hearing her story and her commercials. They're complete lies. So I've got tired of it. I'm just not going to put up with her uh, slandering me with these false accusations. And I decided to file a lawsuit to get her to pull her TV ads. Uh, that was the first thing I want to do is just get her to stop these false ads here. Which uh, I think they have. Second, I think they're not I, running second, anymore I is what I've heard. Well, I'm glad she did. 
maybe it's because of the lawsuit. Because it was just absolutely lies that she put on TV. I've never seen a politician in Oregon go that extreme from lying on TV. The, the best type of character she is, I, I'm sure a lot of voters out there do not want that person in Congress to lie that in much. In your initial you know, cease and desist letter about the ad, you also threatened to try to overturn the election if Salinas wins. That seems pretty extreme. Would you really do that? No, I didn't say that, actually. That's not the letter. My letter to Andrew Salinas does not say that at all. It says you should reimburse me for my TV ads to go through and reimburse me for all that the TV you were putting on TV to rebut your negative, untrue lies on TV. We asked to get that. We had to spend a lot of money, hundreds of thousands of dollars, to refute her ads on TV. That's what I asked for, and I asked her for a public apology. Uh, that's not true. Well, so what, what you're saying is not true. You wouldn't, try to the, overturn, um, you wouldn't try to overturn the election. Let me ask you about another I, issue. I, I didn't ask you. You didn't my, ask my lawsuit. No, I didn't ask you to my lawsuit to her. Mm -hmm. Well, in Absolutely previous, not. let me ask you about abortion. In previous runs for Congress, you've campaigned on a strict anti-abortion platform. What What is your stance on abortion now? Well, let me just clarify something. I just make sure I'm really clear for you guys here. You know, I'm, and I think this is an important issue. Andrew's saying this, what she's doing on TV right now is absolutely not true as well. She's making these false accusations, you know, and when it comes to abortion, I'm a common sense business person in most of my decision making. I think abortion in the cases of when a mother's life is in danger, rape or incest should be allowed. I have two young children and I really value the sanctity of life. Everyone has an opinion on this. Uh, and when does having an abortion go too far? My opponent, Andrea Salinas, believes you should be able to have an abortion all the way up to the ninth month. I think that's just wrong and extreme myself. We talk about extreme. That is probably the most extreme position out there. At, at what you know, point do I'm you think it should be? I'm personally, at what point do you think it should be illegal? Because you say in, the, in rape, incest, uh, the life of a mother. But other than that, at what point do you think an abortion shouldn't be legal? I'm personally pro-life, raised Catholic, and but every woman facing that decision will have to decide that on their own. Oregon Constitution protects that choice for women. You know, every state has its own decisions. I'm not running for Congress to change Oregon's constitution. What uh, about if it comes out, what, let me just ask you, what about if it comes up in Congress? Would you pledge to voters you would not vote against a federal ban on abortion? Would you promise voters you would not vote in favor of a federal ban? The, the federal courts, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that the, that decision should not be at the federal level, and I would agree with that. So I would do everything I can to make sure the states have a uh, the say in that decision, not the federal government. So yes, I would not vote for Lindsey Graham's bill that you're referring to. And I just want but, to you know, quickly mention. Like I said, I'm running. I'm running for Congress. Or I'm running for. Uh, uh, this is one issue. There are so many issues that affect every person. Their, their food they have on their plate, their gas, their health, their health care, their housing costs. I'm running for Congress to get gas prices lower, make our country more energy independent. I'm running to get inflation and crime under control. Those are the most important issues I hear out there. And the TV ads that Andrea Salinas is running up there that are just absolutely false, she's trying to redirect the focus of her voting record. She's been absolutely wrong on almost every vote out there, including all the law, the bills I talked about for protecting or supporting law enforcement. She's voted against all those. She just recently voted for tolling on in Wilsonville on I-5. I just think once the voters hear about this, this is absolutely nuts. She wants to charge up to $5 for anybody going between Twalton and Salem, the Wilsonville Boone Road, she just supported that and voted for that. I think when the voters hear that that's the kind of person she wants, she wants to eliminate all cars in Oregon, gas-powered cars, by 2035. She voted for that. Mike, I have she to jump in for, here. I'm, I'm so sorry. We're out of time. We've uh, run out of time, so I have time for Andrea Salinas. But I want to thank you for joining us. And if you want to know more about where Mike Erickson stands on the issues, you can look for more on uh, his website, MikeErickson4Congress.org. And coming up next, we hear from candidate Andrea Salinas and hear what she has to say on the issues and get her response to the lawsuit the Erickson campaign filed against her over that negative ad. We're back in two minutes. Welcome back to Straight Talk. I'm Laurel Porter. We're talking with the candidates in the newly created 6th Congressional District in Oregon. We heard from Republican Mike Erickson in our first segment, and now we're pleased to welcome Democrat Andrea Salinas. Welcome to Straight Talk, your first time here. It's nice to have you here. Thank you so much, Laurel. It's a pleasure to be here. Andrew, this is a very close race, as you know, and I asked Mike Erickson in the first segment, I want to ask you, why do you think you're the best candidate to represent the new 6th District? Well, I, I know that there are so many reasons why I'm the best candidate, but I'll just tick off a few. 
I've been working in this district and for the people of this district for so many years as a congressional aide with Congresswoman Hooley back in 2006 as, you know, a state legislator who really, I think, tries to implement policies that affect lots of Oregonians, but in particular, I think, you know, the women in this district who who really appreciate the, the you know, the fact that they can make their own health care decisions on reproductive health care, the fact that, you know, I helped to pass a paid family medical leave bill that, you know, allows people to take time off work when they have a sick loved one or need to bring home a newborn child. And the fact that I've been working my tail off to actually try to bring down the cost of health care right here in Oregon. You know, we had a bill a few years back that um, actually cap the cost of insulin um, for people in private insurance. So there are so many things that I have been working on for the hardworking families of this district for a number of years. And I'm really excited now to take the, the comprehensive work that I've done at the state level and really take it to the federal level. Let's talk about inflation because the rising cost of living is top of mind for a lot of voters. The president, we're taping this on Thursday, a reminder to our viewers, the president will be here Friday and Saturday. On Saturday, he's expected to talk about inflation, bringing the cost down. A lot of Republicans blame Democrats for the inflation. What's the first measure you would support in Congress to try to bring down inflation? Yeah, well, thank you for the question, Laurel. And we are all feeling the strain of inflation right now. I know my family is, and really what I'm hearing from people in this district is the cost of living, right? That it's impacting everybody's family budgets. Um, but I do think there are some things that Congress has passed recently that will actually help. And, you know, help is on the way. Um, you know, the Inflation Reduction Act will tackle inflation by, you know, cutting prescription drug costs, especially for seniors who are on Medicare and making sure that we can actually leverage the federal government to negotiate those prices. Um, it should bring down the cost of health care for those who have private insurance premiums. And it'll bring down the cost, energy costs for families who have to pay their utility bills as well. So, you know, the Inflation Reduction Act will cap the cost of insulin. It will, like I said, help reduce reduce health care um, insurance well, premiums. Well, let me jump in here, and Andrea. Let me jump in here because um, nonpartisan yeah. analysts have said the Inflation Reduction Act itself won't actually bring down inflation. It says it'll be 0.01 percent, which is negligible. Some of those other things might bring down some costs, but inflation itself probably won't come down because of the act. But I want to know what specifically would you vote for that you think would bring down inflation? Yeah, so there are things that I think people, again, going back to family budgets and what they're seeing. So, you know, I'm hearing groceries and gas prices, right? And so I think we need a new waiver to allow thousands of gas stations to sell gasoline with 15% ethanol. I think we also need to make sure that we are opening up um, and releasing some of our oil reserves from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. And, you know, I also believe that we need to really take a close look. And I think, you know, it needs to be... Um, Really, I think in a comprehensive way, what are corporations doing right now to take advantage of the time that we're in with inflation and what is going on with price gouging? We know big oil has, you know, has done this in the past. And, you know, I know Senator Wyden has is talking about really taking a look at big oil companies for what their role is in these gas price increases. But, you know, we are also seeing um, these these dictators around the world who are in control of so much of you know oil and gas prices globally and we need to become more energy independent and i do think the the energy independent independence piece of the inflation reduction act will help to start to put us on a andrea i need to, to jump in here in the interest of time i wanted to know longer have to be beholden to these foreign dictators. Let me ask you about crime, a big issue for a lot of folks, and Republicans have portrayed you as a supporter of the defund the police movement. Erickson's campaign says following the murder of George Floyd, you stated your support for reimagining law enforcement, and they say you voted for laws that make law enforcement's job tougher, and Mike gave me an example in the first segment of your vote in favor of House Bill 3164 that limits the circumstances allowing people who refuse to obey an officer's order to be charged with interfering with the police officer. Uh, what's your response to that? And what can you tell voters about what the phrase defund the police means to you? Yeah, so thank you for that question, because I have never been a supporter of defunding the police. And um, and yes, and the ads that uh, Mr. Erickson came out with were 
patently false. My dad was a police officer for over 30 years, and so um, it's also insulting. I know what it's like to worry if your loved one is going to come home safely. Our first responders and law enforcement officers like my dad put their lives on the line every day. So, you know, I actually supported a bill that increased our state police funding by $34 million. But what I have always said is, yes, I think we can reimagine what law enforcement looks like because I think we want everybody in our community to feel safe. You know, there are things that are happening in our state um, where we bring in social service and behavioral health service to help de-escalate certain situations that maybe don't need to be escalated. But I also realize law enforcement needs training. They don't have training around this. They don't have training to even work with social and behavioral health care workers. So those are the types of, I think, reimagining imagining what this could look like. And I think, you know, and I've heard from, law, you know, some law enforcement officers who I think would be really eager to do that. And so I think it's just opening up our minds and our hearts to what is possible. Uh, Andrea, let's talk about that negative ad your campaign ran about Mike Erickson's 2016 DUI. The ad said he was also charged with drug possession, which he says isn't true. We talked about him in the first segment and he he was visibly upset. His campaign is suing you and your campaign for $800,000 and Erickson wants an apology. Do you think you owe him an apology? Um, I don't. I, I stand by that ad. Um, I was setting the record straight because Mr. Erickson lied about my record on law enforcement. Um, but does that you mean know, that you should, the you should run a negative ad against Mr. him that's Eric. not true? Well, it's setting the record straight and really pointing out the hypocrisy. I don't think you can claim to be the candidate of law and order and then to just a few years back have had this incident with police and you know and say the same thing in the same sentence and i think it goes back to a history of behavior with you know do as i say not as i do but he I'm said but your ad your ad and said choice for women let me just say about the drug your ad said he was charged with drug possession and prosecutors didn't actually charge him he said in the first segment that the district attorney called you to tell you that was wrong uh, did your campaign make a mistake? I mean, do you have any regrets running that ad? No, I have no regrets. Um, there were three different documents, the incident report, the release report, and the plea petition that all cited possession of drugs as the charge. And it says charge on there. We actually flash up the incident report in the ad. So I stand by what we said and how we, you know, how police. He was not charged by the DA, but he was charged by state police. Uh, he, and says the say drug, he, was he says the drug in question was one hydrocodone pill that was his wife's that she asked him to hold. And the ad also shows lines of powder being cut that would look like some other drug, not just a hydrocodone pill. Is that misleading? Well, I know from my work in, in behavioral health committee and working on, you know, addiction issues that people who are addicted to hydrocodone, it is the number one way of consumption is to, to I guess, chop it up and, and inhale it. So no regrets, no apologies for that, for that ad. No. no. And, and are you concerned about the lawsuit he's filed? No, I think this goes back to, again, a history of saying one thing, doing another, and trying to portray oneself as something that he's not. And, you know, and I think Americans and certainly people in the 6th Congressional District are tired of multimillionaires trying to lawyer their way out of something or trying to buy their way out of something. You know, I think, um, yeah, I think we're in the arena. Let's play fair. But he came out and attacked me first. And I can give you just 15 seconds for a final thought to leave with our viewers. Yeah, so I would just say, um, you know, there's a lot of differences here. I'm going to be a champion on reproductive rights. My opponents and, and you know, anti-choice with no exceptions. I'm going to be working hard on behalf of working families. He's a multimillionaire who works on behalf of corporations in the one percent. Andrea Salinas, thank you for joining us. And if you'd like to find out more about where Andrea Salinas stands on the issues, you can check out her website, andreasalinasfororegon.com. I thank both of the candidates for joining us. And we hope you'll join us next week when we have the governor's debate live on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. And we'll have a breakdown on Straight Talk that following Friday. We hope you have a great week.